Mr. Beast has fallen out of the sky. He's fallen from grace. The emperor has no clothes. So much is going on on this discussion. I could not hold back. I had to weigh in on this. I had to share my thoughts about this. I think there's so many interesting things going on. Is he to blame? Are other people to blame? Whose responsibility is all of this madness? So clearly everybody has heard what's happened with his longtime friend, Chris. I do not remember his new chosen name. Excuse me for that. Uh, he is a transgender woman. And the other side of this is the exposing of the catastrophe of his manipulating children into gambling and gaming and the whole fake giveaways, the whole deceit behind the scenes at Mr. Beast Empire. So we are going to explore who's responsible for what, what are the core underlying character traits, ethics, virtues, where Mr. Beast has clearly fallen off and how we can understand that about people like him, how we can understand that about ourselves and how we can then use that to improve our lives and, of course, understand other people's behavior. My name is Mike. This is the Starts With Me channel. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, all of that other stuff. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So clearly, Mr. Beast is larger than life. He has become literally the most famous person in the world or up there with one of the most famous people in the world, certainly with people under, I would say, 30 years old, maybe 40. I'm not sure. Huge, larger than life individual. Now, all the problems going on over the last month or so, I'm not sure exactly, are serious. They're problematic, et cetera. I'm not going to talk too much about the details. What I want to get at is how we can use many of the topics covered on this channel to help understand what led to this behavior about Mr. Beast and his crew and how we can avoid doing those things ourselves and how we can help the people around us avoid doing those things. Typically, when people like that, you know, this guy became very famous, very young. Now, when that happens to people, clearly they lack the wisdom, they lack the life experience, they often lack the guidance and the coaching or the mentorship to help them avoid catastrophes like this. You could argue Mr. Beast did a relatively good job up until now, but perhaps he it was a house of cards about to collapse. Now, what are some of the key core components here? Certainly greed. Certainly, self-inflated ego, self-centeredness, a sense of invincibility, manipulation, lying, all character traits that are horrible. Then on the other side of this, kind of like that guy, Sam Bankman Freed, if you haven't heard the whole thing around that guy who lied about the crypto schemes and all that kind of stuff, who's spending a long time in jail. Very similar. He had a Another side of him where he was giving away millions of dollars, tons of money in philanthropic endeavors. And Mr. Beast, up until all this chaos, I know Mr. Beast through my children and through the content they consume. Generally speaking, I had a relatively positive perspective of Mr. Beast and the one entertaining content he would produce and to the incredible philanthropic endeavors again curing blindness, planting trees, uh, developing underserved communities on the other side of the world, all kinds of really amazing things. And that is honorable. That is respectful. Good for him. Now it seems like that could have just been a front to cover up for the inevitable fall from grace that is happening in front of our eyes right now. Who knows? And, and, Going back to Sam Bankman Freed from the whole crypto fiasco, maybe that's what he was doing. Who knows? Now, do you ever behave in that way? Do you ever do good deeds so that you can cover up for bad deeds or use your good deeds as an excuse for why you should be forgiven for your bad deeds? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Those are good questions to consider. Now, I am going to weave in some of the content we've been doing uh, on this channel and we're going to learn from Marcus Aurelius uh, from The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday about how Mr. Beast can learn from Marcus Aurelius to 
avoid these things in the future, to take responsibility for his actions. He has still yet to acknowledge any of this. He probably has a whole host of lawyers and litigators and who else, you know, whoever else uh, helping him decide the best course of action. It doesn't look like he's going to take the noble route. Chances are he would have already if that was the case. So Marcus Aurelius, uh, from today's reading, August 7th, pragmatic and principled, wherever a person can live there, one can also live well. Life is also in the demands of court. There too, one can live well. Marcus Aurelius Meditations 5.16. Just to comment on that briefly, right? Wherever you are, you can act ethically. Whether you're just a Joe Schmo like me, or you're Mr. Beast at, in high society, flying high across the world, living large. Wherever you are, you can be pragmatic and principled. You don't need to act in ways that steer you off the righteous path, if you will. Now, again, to reiterate, that's obviously very difficult when you live in the high society. So we need to understand that, obviously. Okay, and let, I'll finish the reading here. William Lee Miller, in his unique ethical biography of Abraham Lincoln, makes an important point about this famous president. Our de deification of the man makes a point to pretend he wasn't a politician. We focus on his humble beginnings, his self-education, his beautiful speeches. But we gloss over his job, which was politics. That misses what was so truly impressive about him. Lincoln was all the things he was. Compassionate, deliberate, fair, open-minded, and purposeful while being a politician. He was what we admire in a profession we believe to be filled exclusively with the opposite of that type of person right? Politicians are usually jackasses. Principles and pragmatism are not at odds. Whether you live in the snake pit of Washington, D.C., work among the materialism of Wall Street, or grew up in a closed-minded small town, you can live well. Plenty of others have. Okay, what the reading again is pointing out, you can be high and mighty, and you can also be principled and ethical. Those things are not mutually exclusive. But clearly here, Jimmy, Mr. Beast, got so full of himself, so high on himself, and that likely came from being a bit of a failure as a kid. He openly acknowledges. He, I can't remember exactly the story, but basically kind of weaved his way through high school, scraping by, lied to his mother about going to college, spent all his time and money on YouTube, and wow, amazing. The guy is unbelievable what he's accomplished. No one is questioning that. But certainly he had an ax to grind against the world. Certainly he had some shadow work to do, some dark sides of himself, perhaps resenting the world, perhaps feeling like a loser, like a, who knows, okay? It looks like a lot of those things are coming out right now uh, or are being exposed. Uh, and he must have acted unethically numerous times, swept things under the rug, particularly with his colleague. God, it's really terrible. I can't remember her name. I'm going to search that quickly. So clearly, Mr. Beast was sweeping many things under the rug. I just remembered his name, uh, Ava, Ava Chris Thompson. There is no way he did not know certain things that were going on with Ava. I mean, it's so ridiculous that he is pretending he didn't know, or at least made that statement about not knowing or calling out Chris uh, or Ava for all the horrible things she did. Why was Mr. Do Beast doing this? Probably a little bit of self-centered ego, thinking he was better than everyone else, thinking he beat the game, thinking he was on top of the world, which he was, thinking he didn't need to take responsibility or didn't have to face the facts. No doubt some of the woke madness and the political correctness around social media and the whole trans stuff influenced him to toe the line to perhaps ignore things Ava was doing to pretend to be good. And obviously his audience was children. And so he had to toe that line. He had to pretend everything was okay when it obviously wasn't. And he was obviously being deceitful and perhaps just thought he would get away with it. And he probably will. Nothing much will happen. He may lose a little bit of revenue for a while or maybe for a long time. Hopefully 
he does face some consequences for the things that have been revealed. I don't know. The point here is, again, refocusing, I'm getting a bit lost on, refocusing on the characteristics of what leads us to behave in those ways, self-centeredness, greed, dishonesty, lack of courage, lack of humility, maybe even jealousy or resentment or vengeance. He wanted to get back at the world for having to struggle the way he did. I'm just making assumptions. I'm not diagnosed. I'm not a doctor anyway, so I can't diagnose people. But I do understand the dark side of human nature very well. And so clearly a lot of that was going on. Now, what could he do, right? What could he do? He could watch some of my videos on the stoic principles of a good life. He could watch my interviews with other people. The first thing he needs to do is acknowledge that things are not okay. A lot of the things he did are unacceptable. He has a responsibility in this, and he needs to acknowledge that. People are really forgiving, especially kids. Generally speaking, though, people are forgiving when the person in, uh, in mention or whatever takes responsibility, acknowledges the mistakes, acknowledges why they did it or what was wrong about it, and pledges to do differently and backs up the pledge with action and behavior. I think that's what we all desperately hope Mr. Beast does. I don't know about desperately. I think we hope Mr. Beast does that. We hope he can acknowledge the mistakes he has made. We hope he can course correct and behave in ways that are more ethical and more honest, more noble, virtuous, etc. Those are all the things we all are trying to aspire through the content on this channel. And I, in general, in a well-meaning society driven by principles and morals and ethics, which in Western culture and in many other cultures, those are the things we aim for. So let's bring it back to the self. Think about times in the past where you have been deceitful, lied, brushed over your friend's bad behavior that you know wasn't acceptable. I remember in high school when I was involved in a lot of criminal activity, I would rationalize and justify and minimize all the terrible, terrible behavior that I was involved with, but also the peers around me were involved with. And that's not okay. So are there times where you justify bad behavior from yourself or other people that you clearly know is not okay? Recognize that, okay? Mr. Beast is not uniquely flawed in this way. We're all flawed like this. Again, it goes back to taking responsibility for our behavior and making amends and doing the things we need to do to change and ensure that change happens and is consistent, okay? Well, I hope you found that little blend of what Mr. Beast can learn from Marcus Aurelius and my take on the whole Mr. Beast fiasco. Please uh, comment on this video, share any uh, insights, updates, etc. that you uh, find helpful. Consider supporting it on Patreon. Without further ado, again, my name is Mike Stroh. Take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.